Corporation. Grumman Corporation, a Long Island company committed to education. parade. I'm a private eye. It isn't the best job in the world, but it isn't the worst job in the world either. Carrying people from Chicago to St. Louis on your back is the worst job in the world. I'd been working lots of late hours and was tired. My mind was reeling. In fact, I was so mixed up I couldn't remember where I'd put my hat. Suddenly, my doorbell rang. to get back to the mystery of the missing hat later. Are you spray parade? In the flesh. I love your hat. Thank you. I'm Vanessa Van Vandervan, wealthy heiress, thrice divorced, and mother of none. These are the Weisenheimers, my consultants. Hello. Hi. Nice to meet you. Well, come on in. Take a load off your feet. What can I do for you? I am in search of a valuable gold nugget. It is in the desert of Arizona, and I need your help. Mm -hmm. Can you uh, tell me something about it? Well, yes, it's about this size. The size of a hockey puck. It's buried under a cactus plant. Of course, I've heard of it before. I'm not surprised. It's the famous yucca puck, said to be worth its weight in gold. Precisely. This is a map of its exact location. Now, there are two ways to reach the puck. One route is safe. The other route leads to certain death. Mm, well, look, lady, if you want my advice, uh, take the safe route. Oh, but that's just it. It is? I don't know the safe route. That's why I hired the Weisenheimers. They know the safe route. <sighs> well, uh, say, come on, guys, what do you say? Which is the safe route? Take the North Path. Take the South Path. Take the North Path. Well, there it is. The North Path has it. But how can I be sure? Well, two of the three guys said take the North Path. Here's something you don't know. The Weisenheimers are... Strange consultants. Really? Why is that? People actually listen to them? Yes, plus the fact that one of them always lies, one of them always tells the truth, and one of them sometimes lies and sometimes tells the truth. <laughs> <laughs> that is unusual. How did it happen? Well, they were in advertising. Hmm. Well, I've got one question for you guys. Which of you tells the truth? Uh, I do. I do. I do. It's hopeless. No, no, lady, take it easy, take it easy, take it easy. Why don't you uh, watch another sketch or something? I'll be right back. This is tougher than I thought. A whole note is where I'll start. A whole note fills up the bar. Take that note, break it in two. Two half notes fill another bar. Split them. Hey, sounds like math to me. When I think of math, I think of music. When I think of music, I think of math. Multiplication and division It's all right there on your music staff Quarter notes, try them on for size Four to a bar, like the name implies Before the band comes in and you start to move You count out quarters in a steady groove Like one, two, three, four One, two, three, four Tap, tap, tapping out the rhythm Crap, and the man, tell him that I'm with them Tap, tap, tapping out the beat you walk down the street Do you know eighth notes? 
If you don't, you ought to Two for every quarter so the notes get shorter Same size bar to occupy So we start as many beats in the same amount of time One and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and Tap, 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 tapping out the rhythm Call the bass man, tell him that I'm with him Tap, 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 tapping out the beat The beat moves faster and you hear the heat Notes tell you what to do. You take each eighth and you cut it in two. You tap 16 beats to every bar, and your shoes are like pistons in a racing car. Like 1 e and a 2 e and a 3 e and a 4 e and a 1 e and a 2 e and a 3 e and a 4 e and a tap, 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 tapping out the rhythm. Call the drummer man, tell him that I'm with him. Tap, 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 tapping out the beat. Keep on subdividing until you're flying on your feet. When I think of math, I think of music. When I think of music, I think of math. Multiplication and division, it's all right there. Well, Miss Van Vandervan, when we last spoke, you said your consultants, the Weisenheimers, were named Tom, Dick, and Harry. Yes, and Tom always tells the truth. Good for Tom. Mm -hmm. Dick never tells the truth, and Harry sometimes tells the truth. But the problem is, I don't know which Weisenheimer is which. Mm -hmm. Well, while I was away, I made these Tom, Dick, and Harry hats. They should help us keep things straight. Let's get started. Now... Who are you? I'm Tom. You see, he could be Tom and telling the truth, or he could be Dick lying and saying he's Tom. Or he could be Harry, for that matter, also lying. You never can tell about Harry. What I hate are these consultants who make no sense and cost me a bloody fortune. Yes, well, let's move on, Miss Van 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 der Van. Now, who are you? I'm Dick. Dick, huh? Now we're getting somewhere. How? Well, now, is this guy really Dick? I don't think so, because Dick always lies. If he is Dick, then he would have to lie and say that he isn't Dick. But he can't be Tom either, because then he'd have to tell the truth and say, I'm Tom. Right, so that only leaves us one possibility. He's not Tom, he's not Dick, he must be Harry. You get the Harry hat. But that still doesn't tell us which one is Tom. Mm-hmm. Moving right along. Who are you? There is something wrong here. I'm Harry. Uh, there's definitely nothing wrong here, pal. We already have a Harry, and it's not you. He must be lying. He can't be Tom. He's Dick. Right. And that means you're Tom. That's what I've been trying to tell you all from the start. Oh, we couldn't be sure until now. Well, case solved, Miss Van Vandervan. Now all you have to do is ask Tom the safe path to the yucca puck and take it. Or you could always ask Dick, and whatever he says, take the opposite path. Oh, thank you, Mr. Parade. You've made me a happier and soon-to-be wealthier woman, and had a wonderful time. Yeah, that's great. What about your consultants? Have uh, you guys had a good time? I have. Uh, maybe. Not me. Huh. Is that the truth? Yes. I'm kind of undecided. Yes, it is, and I hate your hat, and your office is a fist hum, and that tie belongs to the 1942 DeSoto. And your eyes are too close together, and you're too thin for your own. Good. Math is a wonderful tool, so use it, and you'll be cool. We now return you to the secret number quiz show, What's My Number, already in progress. No, panelists, I'm sorry, not this time. You did not get the secret number. You missed again. However, what do you say we give it another try? Take a look at this secret number. Take a look at your monitors. 
As you know, your grid is numbered 0 to 99. And this secret number is in this section. For our audience at home, I'll give you this hint. The secret number is one of these. All right, to begin questioning, we'll begin with a question asker who was forever begging the question, why are you, really, Alan Stevens? <laughs> oh, thank you, John Charles, every other daily for those kind words. I just wish you'd put them in better working order before you said them. <laughs> oh, Alan, you're a caution. <laughs> no, you mean I'm funny. <laughs> no, he means you're yellow. <laughs> I did that joke back in 1954 when I had my own show. I was... Uh... Your question, please. Oh, <laughs> yes. <clears throat> Is the number we're looking for a multiple of three or of four? I don't know, but you were sweet to ask. No. <laughs> you asked about multiples of three and four. Let's take a look at our number grids. The answer is no. The number is not a multiple of three or four. However, that's an excellent question, and we did eliminate several numbers. Next two, Dorothy Kilbasa, a real household word. And the household word is baloney. <laughs> oh, just kidding, Dorothy. <laughs> John, is the number prime? Your question is, is the number prime? Checking our number grids. Yes. The number is prime. Good question. Once again, eliminating a few numbers. Kitty Hardworm, your question, please. Here's a question, John Lovey. If the digits are reversed, is the resulting number a prime? Well, that's an interesting way to look for the secret number. Let's check our monitors. The answer is a resounding no. Oh. If the digits are reversed, the number is not prime. All right, it looks like you're going to blow another one, panelists. Let's sharpen up and move to Alan Stevens. John, let me ask you this. Do you think quiz show panelists should question on their first date? <laughs> <laughs> Just kidding. Here's my question. Is the sum of the digits even? That's a terrific question, and we'll check our number grids and see... Yes. The sum of the digits is even, eliminating all numbers except for the secret number, which is 53. Oh. <laughs> Congratulations, panel, on a job well done. I was getting a bit concerned there. We hadn't gotten one in a while, but you asked some very sharp questions, and we did get the secret number. We hope that you at home also got the secret number, and that you'll watch us next time on What's My Number? The story you are about to see is a fib, but it's short. The names are made up, but the problems are real. It was Thursday, 9.43 a.m., and Carnegie Hall was alive with the sound of music. Flugelmeister was playing Krusevitsky, Scheistermeister was playing Rachmaninoff, and Lindell was playing Becker. The concert halls were filled, and in the Carnegie basement, a bunch of jazz cats were playing Tom and Jerry's Der Flatter Der Mouse Der Better. There wasn't a sour note in the city. We were working the day watch out of MathNet. My partner is George Frankly. The captain is Joe Greco. My name is Monday. I'm a mathematician. We found ourselves involved in a bizarre kidnapping involving a one-time Broadway star and a will-be Broadway star. The will-be was a friend named Eve Adams. We decided to eyeball a couple of scenes from earlier flickers to get our heads screwed on right. When the star of a just-opened musical called Anything Went turned up missing, Eve had to go on in her place. This could be your big break, Eve. Oh. You're gonna knock him dead in the aisles, Eve. Oh, thanks. Will you stay for the performance tonight? We had work to do, so we couldn't. But she didn't need our support. The show was a smash hit. Did you see what the New York Times said about her? Eve Adams is the brightest talent to illuminate the Broadway sky in years. <laughs> I was one proud mathematician, but then... They found out what really happened to the star, Lauren Bacchanal. They found her? Nope. You said they know what happened to her? They do. She was kidnapped. Not only was she kidnapped, evidence pointed to Eve as a kidnapper. We know that Eve did not kidnap Lauren Bacchanal. Unless... Unless what? Unless Eve did kidnap Lauren Bacchanal. Of course, it was possible that Eve had something to do with it, but I just knew she couldn't have. Then we got a message from Miss Bacchanal on her answering service. Yeah. You must raise the ransom. I've already given two million on the production, but you'll have to raise three more. They're holding me at... Then we got a second tape recording. 
This one was just a series of 12 touch tone telephone tones. We thought it might be a code. We matched the tones with the corresponding numbers on the telephone. There it is, Kate. Hmm. Off the top, there doesn't seem to be any number pattern that repeats itself, does there? No, there doesn't. If it was a code, it was a tough one to break. Maybe it's a phone We number. tried to match the numbers on the phone with the letters each represented. Oh, boy. It's a lot better now, Kate. Really? You got something? I'm kidding. Listen. Cliff Cleovis boy. Bless you. Sounds like a linebacker from Penn State. <laughs> got to be a code. We just haven't broken it yet. Then Captain Greco showed us another piece of evidence. A necklace that belonged to Miss Bacchanal. Where did you get it? Believe it or not, it was found by my men. Really? Where? In Eve Adams' dressing room a little while ago? What are you gonna do, Captain? Nothing. Not until this evening's performance is over. Then. Yes. I am going to have to arrest Eve Adams and put her where the sun don't shine. In, In jail? jail? In jail. Morning, George. Hi. How was your evening? Okay. What's the capital of Iowa? About 9.57. George, what the heck are you doing? Remember that number letter code we got yesterday? If that's what it was, yes. We couldn't make much sense out of it. Well, not when we looked at the bottom line. Then I thought, maybe the second line. And that made sense? No, it didn't. Neither did the first line. So you still haven't answered my question, George. What the heck are you doing? Look. What's this? Look, I can slide these up and down. Yeah. You like sliding cardboard strips up and down, do you, George? Remember how we said there are an awful lot of different combinations you can make here? Uh-huh. There are 531,441 different combinations. So that's why you turn to a life of sliding cardboard strips up and down. This is a combinatoric graphic. By moving these up and down, I can look for letter patterns which make words. But half a million combinations. But that's another thing. There really aren't 531,441 different combinations. But 3 to the 12th is... How many combinations can you make from these first two columns? I can follow each of these three letters with any of these three letters. Well, 3 times 3 is 9. But you really don't have 9 because... Look. There are no English words that begin with BK, BJ, CK, or CJ. So right away we've eliminated four of the nine. That cuts the number of combinations almost in half. Yep, so I started looking for words in this melange. I see. Fox. Hour. Hour. Now, here. Ale. Ox. Jim. Here, I've made a list. The longest word I've found is house. Maybe she's being kept in a house. Maybe. The trouble is, a lot of these words overlap. You know, use the same letters. Uh, like hour. And house. Both words couldn't be in the same message. Right. Try moving the strips again, from left to right. Okay. We get ale, but nothing beyond that. A-L-E-A, -E 
Nope. A-L-E-B, nothing. A-L-E-C. Nickname for Alexander? Next letter is K. Alakhouse? Maybe there's a place called Alakhouse. Go on. Okay, with B, we get B-L-E. A. K. Bleak House? Maybe. Try C. Cleek House. Okay, we've got three possibilities. What about the last two columns? Okay. Alec House, Bleak House, Cleek House. O Y, O X, O W, N W, N X, N Y, M Y, M X, M W. Not much. George, wait. N Y. N Y. New York, of course. Alec House, New York, or Bleak House, New York, or Cleek House, New York. Maybe it's a hotel. I'll check with our computer people. Morning, Kate. Morning, Captain. How'd the collar go last night, J. Edgar? You think I like locking up pretty actresses? I had to do it, George. I know, I know. She all right? She's as comfortable as anyone can be in jail. She still says she's innocent. Well, Kate and I think so too, Skipper. Trying to break this coded message we found yesterday. Could lead us to Miss Bacchanal. Good luck. A little good news, a little bad news. Which do you want first? Oh, the bad news, I guess. The bad news is there isn't an Alec House, a Bleak House, or a Cleek House in New York City. Terrific. What's the good news? There is a Bleak House in New York State. Really? Where? In a town called Nyack. Nyack? N-Y-A-C-K? Uh-huh. Well, if that's where she is, why didn't she spell out Nyack? Maybe she was cut off by the kidnappers. Got the address? Partner, let's roll. We called Vinny, our undercover cop, substitute teacher, and driver extraordinaire, and along with Captain Greco, headed north to see what we could see. We had stuck with it, which is what you have to do to solve tough problems. Of course, we thought we had the answer, but you're never sure until it checks out. Bleak House looked as though it had seen better days. We called the local police for backup in case we ran into trouble with the kidnappers. question or two? Uh, go ahead. Did you know the men who kidnapped you? I never saw them. It was too dark in my dressing room, and they kept me blindfolded here, except at night. But then, it was too dark to make out their countenances. So you really can't identify them? Perhaps by their voices. They were gruff. Most kidnappers are. 
Very gruff, Mr. Franklin. One of them broke my nail when he slammed the phone down while I was sending my code. And it was a very clever code, too. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Were there just two men, Miss Bacchanal? Isn't that enough? Two men and that treacherous, conniving little vixen who tried to take over my part. Eve was here? She was. You said you were blindfolded. I heard her. It was Wednesday afternoon. She came here to collect her share of the buru, or whatever you policemen call that. Money. We call it money. If you can't finger those two mugs, I'm afraid you're out the two million dollars ransom. File it under the cost of doing business. And now if you'll excuse me, my public away. Come, George. Our office awaits. George and I decided to visit Eve to try and cheer her up. She was lower than a snake's hips. It's nice to see friends, even under these circumstances. We just wanted you to know. Well, I don't know. We still like you, even if you're a crook. George. I mean, even though it looks like. I understand. But I am not a crook. Where have I heard that before? Eve, how do you explain this? Lauren said she heard your voice in Nyack. Nyack? I've never been to Nyack. I've never even heard of Nyack. I hadn't either. Lauren said she heard your voice there last Wednesday. Said she thought you'd come back to pick up your share of the ransom. Well, if I did, where's the money? Matter of fact, we've gotten a court order to check out your bank transactions, Eve. Check away. All you'll find is about $800 and change. I'm sorry we have to snoop, but we do. That's okay. It would have been more. You know, the balance. Except for my first paycheck. Oh, you finally got paid? Uh-huh. And can you beat it? I took it to Lauren's bank and the check bounced. Your first paycheck bounced? Yep. Boy, when things go bad, they go bad. Eve, we've got to go. Thanks for showing me your line. Keep your chin up, Eve. Catherine. Eve? When was I supposed to have been in Nyack? Last Wednesday afternoon. Fancy that. An alibi. What? Last Wednesday afternoon, I was on stage doing a matinee performance of Anything Went. Remember? One hundred percent of Square One TV is a production of the Children's Television Workshop. This program was made possible by...